So just to give a little background, make sure everybody can remember all on the same page. Um, we have the adult moth. This is just the life cycle of Lovisa Matrana. We have the adult moth, the female, the mated female will lay 80 to 160 eggs in her lifetime. From each single egg will hatch one larva or one caterpillar. That larva goes through five life stages before it is considered mature. Um, and though we hear in the press about the you know blood sucking moth, et etc., cetera, et cetera, it's actually the larva that's doing the damage. So it's not the moth flying around that's um, doing the damage, other than the fact that you know they're really and laying eggs, and reproducing. But when you talk about the damage to the fruit, it's the larva that we're really concerned about here. So their their main job in life is to eat a lot. Um, so that the bigger they are, the healthier they will be when they're adults. And when they're adults, that means the healthier adults are going to lay more eggs, reproduce more, um, and then, you know, just keep the cycle going. So it's really the job of the larva to um, eat your crop and to get really fit as an, uh, as an adult. So that mature larva spins this nice little cocoon and then pupates inside of it. And from that pupa will emerge as an adult. And the cycle begins again. Um, we call from egg to adult is considered one generation. And we have three generations of the moth on the um, north coast. So on the first generation, which is from pre room to berry set, you have the eggs laid here on the pre womb um, flowers. The larvae begin feeding in the pre womb flowers. So you can see the feeding damage here and the webbing. And then they're still in there feeding through bloom and through berry set. And during bloom, which when you're out anyway looking, you know, rating bloom, how much bloom you have, it's a really great time actually to be scouting because. You see these little clumps of dried caps. So if the larva is been feeding and webbing, we see these little clump caps. And you can actually see this, you know, driving an ATV pretty slowly, not too quickly, or just walking. You're walking along, you're looking at blue, and so you want to look at it. Okay, maybe you put on a, uh, an oversight, and so you want to really determine whether or how that was effective, or whether you have a larval population. But you can see it there in these um, clump caps. So it's a really great thing. Um, you don't need any kind of microscope, no fancy equipment. You can actually see that. Tease it open and see if you see a larva inside of there. Okay, second generation that we have from pea size berry to corrasion. Um, and as far as scouting for the second generation, and this is usually later in the second generation that you're going to see this around corrasion, you start seeing these wrinkled berries. Um, this year we had wrinkle berries for other reasons, but we also have some wrinkle berries from Lobesia. Um, and then see this sort of uneven ripening. What happened is that larva actually started feeding on that berry pre duration and then because of this feeding, that, that part of the berry did not go through duration. And so you get this sort of, I, I think it almost looks like a bruise. Um, you get this sort of bruise look. And again, you can't just walk by and see this. As you can see, I've actually teased the bunch open in order to see that. So you won't just see bruising on the outside, but if you do actually see some wrinkling, something that doesn't look quite right, you open it up, you see the bruising, and then if you squeeze just gently enough, sometimes this little head will pop out. Sometimes it pops out and it just goes right back in your butt. So that's a, something to look for in this uh, second generation. Um, this picture here was taken in 2009. We did not see anything that looked like this because of Lobesia this year. So there was no nasty botrytis infections because of Lobesia. Um, so that's a good thing. But um, and at this point, if you're seeing this, it's it's too late. So um, you know, you really need to do and as we've learned this year. I think you know, we really need to be proactive in our treatments in the first and second generation so that we, we never get something like this. 
we did see in third generation this year um, some isolated spots where we had a little bit of replaying of the berries um, and then some water feeding. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about um, some of the projects that went on this year. Um, uh, some research projects that we did this year. Um, we had a monitoring program, um, a preliminary alternate host survey, and then we also had some of the insecticide trials. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about the monitoring program. And remember, I'm only talking about the University of California's monitoring program. The statewide program that was run by your county ag commissioner's offices, the CDFA, I'm not going to discuss that today. Greg Clark is here, and he's going to give you the rundown on that. So all I'm going to talk about are the UC traps. And so the countywide traps were designed to detect populations throughout the county. My UC traps were actually designed to follow the generations. So you needed to know when to spray, what to look for, et cetera, et cetera. So the UC monitoring program was really focused on, you know, specific vineyards, and there were about five vineyards during the season. We started out with places that in 2009 we knew had populations, um, and then we also looked at two olive groves. And so we were really just trying to figure out where the insect was in its life cycle at different times of the year. And so most of our tracks were in the sort of the hot spots, Oakville Rutherford and then Third Avenue. Um, later in the season, we're also in St. Helena. Um, we checked our tracks three times per week. So the countywide tracks were checked once every two weeks. But I wanted information about the flight, so I checked them. Actually, I didn't check them. I should acknowledge Emily here, who did all the track checking. Um, but I can stand up here and say that I checked them, but I did not. Um, and then, for those of you who received my newsletter, um, I did publish an online newsletter so that um, people would be aware of the, the flights. And so, from our tracks, this is the sort of data that we got. Um, this is just the first flight of the season at one vineyard. And you can see the flight starts. We're not catching very much. It goes up to a peak and then it drops off. And so for each of the three flights, we were able to follow, okay, when did it start, when did it peak, and when did it end? 